Hey guys, this is Danny Boy. This is a continuation of episode 24. We're going to finish off this planet, Novaria, facing Cerberus. And I'm using the Grawl Spike Thrower and the Hornet. So I mentioned in a previous video that I wanted to see what will happen when you shoot the Grawl Spike Thrower into the Shield of a Guardian. I was really hoping that it would just go right through and just wreck him, but no. Though it does do considerable damage, as you just saw. It really it won't one-shot them or anything. You still should aim for the eye slit when possible. There he goes. So I'm just in this area, trapped in a very small space. As you know, if you've seen my previous videos, I hate being trapped in boxes. I hate being dug in into small areas because it gives you very little room to maneuver. And it allows enemies to close on you and to throw grenades at you where you have nowhere to go. <clears throat> and right now I am defending Caden as he sinks up a terminal, or does something to a terminal. So, and yes, I'm now being attacked on the right, and I have no metagel, and I'm very afraid right now. So I panic, and I use an ability to stun the enemy. So now we have some breathing room, and I'm contemplating leaving. But again, I know that there's an enemy to my right because I can see James shooting at him. Got lucky there. Oh, nice. That's why you don't peek, Assault Trooper. I really do love the Grawl Spike Thrower. It's a just amazing weapon. Keep in mind that I'm using this weapon. I do have a 15% damage mod on it. And I'm using the increased capacity mod, which I think suits it well, because of its main limitation is just the number of shots it has. But I'm using a level 1 Grawl Spike Thrower, and that's how much damage it does. So, again, all of my weapons are level 1, but the Predator Pistol, that is the only weapon I bothered to upgrade. At this point, I really should start throwing around upgrades more, but I'm still saving up for my Spectre Requisition weapons. So I'm trying to be conservative as far as money goes. And the more powerful weapons are more expensive to upgrade, the Grawl Spike Thrower being one of them, so that's something to keep in mind as well. So here we have a very bad situation. We have a narrow stairwell, a kill zone, and they have the high ground. If this was an FPS, I would never be fighting here. This is ridiculous, this is suicidal. Should never be fighting here. But I do have my party members watching my flanks, I believe. And I'm not really sure how to flank these guys. I've never played on this map before. I don't really know the map. But in a second, I will be getting out of here and just trying something else. I'll be leaving a party member here to watch the stairwell because I just can't get shots off on these guys. If I was using a sniper rifle, things would be different because you can kill them much faster with much greater burst. But this Hornet really isn't designed to burst enemies down quickly at long ranges. At least not when you have so little of their bodies exposed. This is a three-shot burst with recoil, so similar to the Vindicator or the Incisor, you should be aiming a little low when getting, uh, especially when trying for headshots or what have you, to ensure that all three bullets hit. Though the, I would think the spread for the Hornet is much lower than the Incisor, though I would think it's also a little bit more than the Vindicator. It's a little less accurate than the Vindicator. I'm not sure though. I'll be testing it out in my target practice series eventually, when I get around to it. Hopefully sooner rather than later. I have gotten some positive feedback, so that is encouraging. So here we have a great defensive position, as they have a ladder that their stupid AI requires them to take every so often, which leaves them very vulnerable when they climb up. I will just spoil it and tell you that I do die in a moment. And it is a fluke. It is a fluke death, and I is angry's rage. Especially because I was doing fairly well. Well, I will be in a second. Right now it's fairly mediocre, but in a moment, I sort of started understanding what I should be doing with the Grawl Spike Thrower at these ranges. Especially when facing shielded opponents. And my accuracy gets better in sync with the projectile. That weird bizarre noise you might hear in the background is Reeve. 
That is the sound effect for Reeve when it takes effect. So here we go. Boom. 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 This is an example of when sometimes it's better, rather than charging shots, to just do a burst of two shots. Like so. And there is a way to quickly fire two shots in succession by briefly charging the weapon and then quickly firing another shot, which I don't believe I do. I might have done once. But again, I will be showing that in target practice later when I get around to shotguns. So here we have a turret that I'm trying to hack from range, but I just can't get line of sight on it. But it suddenly dies, I believe... Actually, I don't know, because its engineer is alive. I don't know why it suddenly died. But here I am trying to close on it, and I'm going to hack it in just a moment. And then deal with the engineer. I always mistake James as an enemy. He's such a huge, hulking monstrosity. Again, if you target the backpack of the engineer, it will instantly kill him when his shield is down. And here I die instantly. I could have sworn I just hacked that turret. Pretty sure I just sabotaged that turret. So unless the engineer instantly died and he had no other target to attack... Yeah, I don't know what is up with that. So pretty annoying. I do not like fluke deaths. I do not like unfair deaths. But what can you do? It is what it is. So, I am now running back to try to find Metagel. And then I will... Redo this sequence. Always sucks to die on the very last enemy of a sequence. I believe that is my last death of the playthrough, though. I think that was two deaths. Not too bad. Could have done better. And I was afraid for a second, because I could have sworn I heard a mech. But I think I'm hearing a turret deploy? I'm on it. And this time I'm avoiding the stairwell, and I'm just going back to that area with the ladder. Getting my party members in position. Waiting for this guy to peek. And I'm no longer trying to conserve ammo. I just want this to be done. So. Bursts all the way. Is it just me, or is the Grawl Spike Thor one of the most satisfying weapons in the game as well? Just the sound effect, and the blood splatter, and the knockback. It's just incredible. I have a distinct feeling that the most used weapons in the game are going to be the Track Ram Launcher, the Grawl Spike Thrower, and probably the Widow and Black Widow. Unless there's a sniper rifle even more effective than the Widow in the game. Which is quite possible. I believe there's a railgun in the game. A Geth railgun, so... Who knows how effective that will be. I will let you guys know uh, now that I will not be using the Grawl Spike Thrower every mission for the rest of the game. I will be probably switching my loadouts for the very next mission back to sniper rifles to try those out again. I really don't like sticking to the same loadout for multiple videos in a row unless I've just gotten a weapon. And so I want to show it off some more. Boom. And I haven't used sniper rifles in a while. So I'll probably be using those again, maybe going back to the Viper. Or the Valiant. There's a Nemesis sniper on my far right. One thing I could say I am thankful for is the fact that there were no phantoms in this mission. I really hate phantoms as an engineer. I am terrified of them, though I really haven't had much experience fighting <coughs> excuse me, fighting them, so maybe that will change. But we are coming to a close for this part of the fight, and now we just have the conclusion of the video coming up. Why are you alive? Seriously. Also, somebody mentioned in comments of one of my videos that if I don't like cooldowns, then why am I even playing a caster? Or I don't care about cooldowns, why am I playing a caster? And I don't think I ever said I don't care about cooldowns. I try to use my powers as much as I can, 
and I try not to create a large penalty for using them with weapon loadouts, but when I find new weapons, I tend to somewhat forget about my powers because I want to experiment and I want to kind of gauge the effectiveness of the weapon that I've just found, so I play the game more like a shooter when that happens. Once I do have a loadout that I use consistently, I will probably be better about using my powers, though I don't feel like I just totally forget to use them. I, I think I do use them pretty consistently. But, yes, I'm not quite sure what he was implying, but anyway, maybe he'll get back to me. <coughs> Excuse me. Voice is getting a little hoarse. So yes, the boss of this mission is an Atlas mech, and if you can kill an Atlas mech on Sir Kesh, Sir Kesh being the planet that you face the Atlas mech in the demo and in the main game, the Solarian planet, I see no reason why you wouldn't be able to absolutely demolish the Atlas mech on this map. This map is huge, extremely wide open, tons of places to take cover. It's really just a non-issue. I am not afraid at all of this Atlas mech. And I have the Grawl Spike Thrower, so as you can see, I can demolish his armor. In fact, a charge shot from the GST even makes the Atlas mech flinch. So really, no worries. Even there, I really wasn't worried. I knew he wouldn't be able to kill me, even with that little speck of life left, because he should have been out of shots. He could only fire two shots and a rocket, and he has a delay before firing the rocket. I still am not sure if there's a weak point of the Atlas mech, but anyway, he's gone. That was close. And that is the mission. Alright guys, well, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. Please like, sub, comment if you want to. I definitely appreciate it a lot. It is very, very encouraging. And uh, have a good one. Later, guys.